right, y'all, we are back with you today, and Annalise and the kids went on a little adventure. What'd you guys do? Uh, we went and picked up more oysters, or more bags of oysters. We got four more bags um, to add to the two that we already received earlier, like a few months ago. So what are we doing with the oysters, and where'd you get them? Um, we got them from Restore Our Shores. Um, they had a location at a dock where I went and picked them up today, because they were giving out extra ones for people who wanted more. Um, I wanted more because if I'm doing it for two, why not do it for, for more? Um, and I just enjoy doing it. So we, um, we, first of all, these are the oysters. Why are, hold on real quick. Why are we doing it? So one adult oyster, I believe a full grown oyster. I might have my facts wrong, but I believe that they filter, one of them filters 80 gallons of water a day. So... Once these get big, they're going to help clean the Indian River Lagoon, which needs tons of help with the right, pollution. And right. So else. we have these. What we do is we live, uh, we have a dock on the river over there. And so what we're doing is basically we're just kind of nursing these, right? We're, we're, yeah, we're just growing them from baby to full grown. Um, and then once they're full grown, then we pass them back off to restore our shores. And then they put them out in the river on reefs that they're putting all of them together. Probably artificial um, reefs that they artificial made. Artificial reefs that they build. And um, I think they've done several miles so far over the past years um, with their efforts. So, um, it, I mean, every little bit helps and it's fun. You know, it's like having a little science project at our dock that we can pull these things out. Um, we pull them out once a week uh, to mimic a tide. Since we have like a micro tide here, um, it doesn't, um, uh, the oysters don't really come in and out of the water. Yeah, our water, in the lagoon. It, unless we're in a, a real, uh, you know, stormy kind of season, our water uh, level does not fluctuate too much down at the dock. Maybe, yeah. maybe a foot and a half at the yeah, most. Unless we have a storm or it, something. Right, like right. That, like but on your average day, between high and low tides, only two feet at the most. Yeah. I mean, I, I think. Um, so, so yeah. So that was. Um, and you know, we know. So these used to grow naturally all over the river. In fact, we've met someone who used to collect them you know for a living uh, and sell them um he actually used to collect them under our dock in some yeah. of our neighbor's docks way back i think he said in the late 70s or early 80s mm -hmm. um and then unfortunately with all the pollution in the river in 2011 there was a brown tide and in, in which that wiped out almost all the seagrass like 75 percent of all the seagrass in the indian river lagoon plus it killed ma majority of all the clams too um so uh th that was the biggest yeah. Factor. All right. So this is we've actually done this for a whole year um, mm -hmm. and we didn't put it on the channel. I don't know why we just didn't. But um, this is the start of a whole new cycle. This is this is the start. She actually just got them out of the van. They just got home. So let's show them what they look like right now. So these are like really baby ones. The last time the first time I did it, I was so when she says ones. real baby ones, you're talking about these little dots yeah. right on I, there. So this is like a dead oyster shell that they spawn. They, they put the oyster shells in um, these uh, baths and it's complicated because it's um, the little, apparently the, um, the little, uh, uh, the little tiny, tiny babies before they latch onto these are microscopic. So if you have like a filter in your like tank, it runs them through the filter and kills them. So you have to have like a special filter that has like a small like regurgitate. Gotcha cycling um thing so that it doesn't kill these little babies and right it has so to be heated up a certain temperature to get them to spawn because they only spawn within a certain degree range um so uh and that's what the, the foundation be, does they don't yeah. they don't put that on on the homeowners like us they they wait until they get you know this size before they pass so that's what us. happened to these so they just put dead oyster shells and then all the little baby spat sticks to both sides and then so like this shell will become 20 oysters and they'll all kind of be stuck to this one yeah so and we'll show you guys here what so what she's doing is she's going to put we usually only put one bag in each of these cages right yeah but they but were short, we're short on, on cages so we're putting two bags in here right now and this is what two bags looks like in a cage now as these get bigger 
as the oysters get bigger, they'll fill this cage. And if we left all of these in this one cage, it wouldn't, it would the cage it. wouldn't be enough. It would actually bulge out the It size. will. By the time these grow up, what is it, maybe six months from now or something I like that? I think it was like nine months Nine total. months. This cage, the, our last cages were completely filled with oysters. Yeah, it was like a brick it was like a brick now it wasn't quite a brick because we um we take them out and we shake them and we rinse them once a week and also um uh fouling is what they call it when there's um predators eating the um the oysters because everything wants to eat them right because right. we like to eat them so um and when they're little like this i'm sure that they're prone to getting eaten up like I've already found um, sheep's head, uh, Right, so we have to basically, crabs. basically what we have to do is pull these cages out and let them sit for a couple hours so any marine life that's all in the there is gonna- All predators in the water. So when you're pulling them out of the water, all gonna those die. predators are gonna die. Right. But I try to just pull and, them out the and, best I can. And so that's what the tide would do for us naturally. Mm -hmm. But because we have such a low tide here- So that's probably why like Charleston, um, in Charleston- Yeah, the there's low country. A really, there's a really, um, fluctuating tide yeah. there and there's tons of oysters there, there is tons probably because of their tide and it yeah. probably is more successful well there. they have and there's no so. doubt that the they have cleaner water there well, yeah I and mean, they have like that marshy right you know, that's our, our water in its own way where we know? live in central florida um on the east coast a lot of our waterways have been totally the natural waterways are gone they've been channeled into canals and then pumped into the indian river so we get the indian river gets a lot of runoff not only from you know, septic systems from homes like ours, but also from um, uh, agriculture. just agriculture. You yeah, know, we, we live in, you know, if you've ever heard of Indian... directed the St. John's River, you know, as an example, right. to go around to make it work for irrigating the, um, the orange groves that we have. Yeah. So, so, oh, looks like he came out to see us. So, oh, it's okay, buddy. So you want to go take care of him real quick while okay. I, I'm going to um, just show them. Yeah, let's go get down to the dock and we'll kind of show the next step. Yep, that sounds good. All right. All right. So now we're here. Yeah, bugs are bad. Mosquitoes are bad down yeah, here. They so are. These, are, these are the ones we already have on the dock. There's one over there. And then there's right one here. right down here. So let's uh, so, I'll pull this one first. I got it, sweetie. It's going to fall in. You'll Do see it. how quickly the growth is. Yeah, whoa, jeez. Yeah, we, we need to this scrub this week. one. Oh, we should have brought our little scrubbing tools. Yeah, we should have. So you guys can see. Oh, there's a predator right there. Yep. Let's see if any others came out. There's See, see all these little predators scurrying away? They just... Yep. Also, these are little shrimps. Oh, yeah. That is a little shrimp. Yep. There's probably all They're sorts probably, of other stuff I, in here. A lot of times things go in there too just for protection. Yeah. So you guys can see, I mean, this didn't look no, quite this, this was... clean last week, but it was pretty close to this. Uh -huh. Just a, maybe a week and a half ago. Yeah. So what we'll have to do is... Um, gently rinse it. Yeah, we'll gently rinse it and then we'll scrub the the grate and then get it back in the water. Uh-huh. So shrimp needs to go. And you want to, um, you want to have them hanging about a foot above the bottom of the seafloor. Um, and he wanted to have it kind of like level like that. Yeah. So you can kind of shake it a little bit. I, that's what I've been yeah. doing really basically right now. Yes. Just to, so that I'm not being um, harsh to the clams. And that's why it looks kind of bad too. Because we haven't been... I'm going to have to get We haven't here. been scrubbing them. I'm going to have to scrub these though. We'll pull yeah. this one up and at least get the predators out. Oh, the mosquitoes are bad. What we got in there? Oh, I see a predator. There's an oyster stuck in the side that we gotta that get rid of. That one right of there, too. little fish. Where? Let's see if it came out. Did he come out? Yeah, there it is. Yep, there's some right there. There's oh. a sheep's head right here. Yep. No, that's not a sheep's that's head. That's a toadfish, I yep. think. And this little, I don't think that's a shrimp, it's a little baby uh, lobster. <laughs> it looks is like, it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. It does look like that. Uh, he's, I mean, he's just trying to be protected. Yeah, he's, he's not, he's I don't think he eats anything. Get him out. There we go. Come on, dude. I'm trying to help you. Right. Oh, well, I'll help him out later. So, so yeah. look, this like this oyster is like stuck in the side here. You want to get, you want to have all the oysters kind of <laughs> loose in there so they don't, yeah. so we they can get them back out when they want to put them in the uh, make the reef. So I'll come back down and do that. We'll just, we got to get these in the water. Yeah. Out for a while, so we'll come back down and scrub those later. Let's go ahead and place these two. You want to put one like right here? Sure. All right, you got to kind of do it where there's gaps in the boards. Yeah. I'm big enough to hold the... Spread these oysters out. 
so they're level, so it hangs level. And then we got to make sure that it's underwater it's at low totally tide. Totally underwater, yeah. And then it, but it's not sitting on the ground. Yeah. Let's see. There's the ground, so let's raise it to about right there. Put it through here like that. All right. All right. Boom. This other one. You want to do this on the other side or all on this side? Um, what do you think? I I've, I've been doing it on this side um, because I found that there was um, more algae when I put it on this side. But so this is north. For the most part the water this is a lagoon so the the direction the water flows is based on the wind not really current so a lot of times the lagoon is flowing north so maybe it's best to have them on the north side of yeah the i don't i just found that um they stayed the cleanest and had the best chances over on this side for some reason it could also be that maybe it's in the shade more on this side and maybe that helps yeah. it i don't know All right. Great. And it's really cool. Even when they're little tiny babies, I wish I would have looked closer at them. Um, they kind of spit little water out and click. Yeah, I wish. Uh, so maybe. Let's yeah, see I wish we could. Pull one of these out and see if you can see it. This, uh, you think you this size. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it the other day. Let's see. Let's see. It's hard for my I camera to focus really. through that. Great. All right. They need to be rinsed off more. Maybe if we rinse them off, we can get better footage. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, y'all. We will start. Maybe we'll start doing a video every time we come down here, like an update on cleaning them and stuff. Uh -huh. um, so everyone can kind of see what what we do and um, how how they progress, how they. Because I mean, it's crazy. They'll go from this. Like I said, this cage will be busting by the time mm -hmm. busting full by the time uh, they're full grown. So. It's really fun to watch the process. It so. is, and you gotta be really careful too. Like um, uh, the girl in charge told me, some people were just like pulling them out or not even pulling them out. Like you really have to pull them out every week because if you don't do that, they like turn into like a concrete brick. Yeah, they do. And sometimes there'll be like a toadfish in the middle of it and they can just live in there and just be feasting on all the, they'll just live there and then they'll eat all your oysters. Yeah. Except for like maybe the ones on the outside. So, and then all of your efforts for, for nothing or for less yeah. you know. for the toadfish yeah not for the toadfish no. yeah no they were for the toadfish yeah, at that they point. were for the toadfish <laughs> yeah like a giant toadfish right in the middle all right y'all well if you have any uh questions or comments about our oysters here um just post down below we'll put some information the link to the uh restore our shores mm -hmm. uh organization and um you know like i said we'll be uh we'll make some more videos uh to show you guys the progress along the way this year so make sure you check back to the channel for updates on the on the uh environment saving uh oysters yeah, yeah. one last thing i want to mention is the restore our shores program the people have been very professional that come out they come out quarterly to the house so if like that's something you're concerned about um, having people coming to your house or strangers or whatever. It's the same group of people every time So I know them all now because yeah. they've come out and and you know, that's that's kind of a nice feature, too Yeah, um, they've got really good people working for them. Yeah, they do. So yeah, it's been, it's been and they've experience. they've taught the kids a lot, too so. Yeah, yeah, they let the kids do like participate in everything. It's great. Yeah. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the uh, our, our venture here today uh, Like I said, if you do have any questions or comments, just post down below Until next time everybody out there. Take care